Hello and welcome to Let's Podcast. Yay, Christmas episode. I'm that Swedish guy and with me today, as usual, is... Uh, Dark Aaron. Way. All right. This, Christmas time. This is, yeah, it's Christmas time. Like going home, spending time with the family, being capital, being a greedy capitalist and stuff like that. It's awesome. It's all about the uh, presents, man. Totally. But why else would I travel all the way back home with a cat? I mean, hello. <laughs> If they don't send it to me. I, I think that's rude, you know. If they really loved me, they'd send it to me. Yeah, no, this is kind of selfish of them to make you, like, come spend time with them. Yeah, it's, oh, it's so annoying. Um, this episode, I suppose, is a little bit special because we haven't really got that much planned. Um, Not really. It's kind of more... It's Christmas, so we shouldn't have to, like, push ourselves to, like, try, even try, no. Yeah, you, you... You guys just be happy that we're doing anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> and you should be happy that it's not a goddamn clip show. Um, <laughs> you know, the way most people, like, cheese it out this time of year. Like, yeah, we're going to release this special episode where you can watch very small parts of old episodes. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be awesome. Um, yeah, we could have, we could have a, a clip show of 15 minutes out of the, the previous shows. Each. Yeah, that would be awesome. Do you want to edit that? Do you want to edit that? Okay, I'll I let do. you edit that. I, I totally do not. <laughs> yeah, so no, we're not going to do that. Um, <laughs> instead, we're just going to be a little bit casual and talk a little bit about Christmas, a little bit about memories from Christmas past, uh, and probably game-related, I suppose. Um, like, what games we got and what games we didn't get. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That'll, that'll probably stick out more to me, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but I also thought I'd ask you last. I asked you last time to comment and ask questions, and unfortunately, you did. So I'm gonna have to answer those, or we are gonna have to answer those, I guess. Um, no, no, I'm just gonna sit back and let you do all. <laughs> oh, thank you. Work. Yeah, uh, I was also told I should get an accent, like speak with a Swedish accent, like. My name is that Swedish guy, and that is awesome, and that's actually how most Swedish people speak English. Uh, and I don't think I could do that for an entire hour. I would get so bored, and I would get so angry at myself. I would too. That, that would start to get annoying. Yeah, I, Th those, so, are, those uh, unusual pauses to the sentence structure. <laughs> it's very, yeah, it's, uh, it's sentence structure in Swedish is not the same as it is in English, so you know everybody has to like think. Once or twice before they can actually, yeah, that word's come before that one, and that word comes at the end of this one. So nah, they I, really have to think about each ep each word. <laughs> I understand it, man. I can't speak foreign languages for anything. Uh, uh, yeah, but you know, I can speak Swedish naturally. I can speak Danish. I can speak German. I can speak English. Uh, so yeah. Well, geez, dude. <laughs> but I lived up very. I grew up and not lived up. I grew up very close to Denmark, so I watched a lot of da Danish television. Uh, you can naturally hear that I can hear or I can speak English. Pro pre uh, you know, fairly good anyway. <laughs> uh, and German, I studied in school, though I remember very little of German, so I probably shouldn't brag about it. Uh, well, I don't know any at all, so I can't get you on it. <laughs> Oh, excellent! Now I can like brag, but the, the viewers could, so I should probably not do that. Just don't uh, the babble fish; it'll translate perfectly. <laughs> oh yeah, because AIs are so damn advanced these days. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, um, should we start with memories, or should we go with like ask a few questions or answer a few questions? Uh, we sh I, I guess we can go ahead and do questions because I think. People really want to hear that. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe uh, the first question I ran across on YouTube was how what we think about transaction transactions uh, transitions of old video game icons to modern days like Mario, Sonic, etc., Castlevania. Um, I yeah. wouldn't really say they have transitioned recently because like Mario transitioned during the Nintendo sixty four. Uh, the Castlevania series during the PlayStation era, and that was a long time ago. Um, well, the Castlevania though is really unusual in that they they they've been sticking to two uh, D for the most part. Yeah, and thank God for that. Except um, for this most recent one, which I've come to. I played the demo, and I hated every second of it. Uh, so, 
Well, I'm, the way I understand it was, uh, do you like old Castlevania games? Then yeah. this game <laughs> is nothing like that. Uh, do you like <laughs> Do you like God of War? Good, because that's yeah. what this game is. Yeah, I, I, so, something like that. And then there were like segments when you were riding a horse, and you were like. It was some of the most bland, boring, repetitive combat ever on that horse, and I just, I was just like, why? Why is there a horse in Cas horse horse in Castlevania? And I'm not talking about the prostitutes here because they are like a dime a dozen in Castlevania. Um, yeah, they're kind of all over the place. Yeah, it's you know, especially in the way that women dress. Uh, so in Castlevania games, I don't know, they do look like prostitutes, <laughs> especially for that era. But uh, nah, yeah. I, I've been talking to a, a guy who's been playing through it, and he was like several hours into the game, and I said, well, what's the story so far? He's like, I have no idea. <laughs> well, I know it has something to do with a dead wife, but that's about it. Well, uh, it, there's like, uh, you're like on a mission because heaven and hell got separated, but they don't explain what that... Aren't they supposed to be separated? I don't know. Well, apparently in this world, like... The realm, realms of heaven and hell have direct influence over the world, and that's kind of where okay. Dracula and the monsters come from, is hell. Ah, okay. And then, the like, heaven will give holy warriors to kill the monsters and stuff. But now, like, heaven doesn't get to interfere anymore, but hell does. So, you have some issues there. Yeah, that apparently. sounds very complicated, and I don't think I should get my head wrapped around yeah. that, because it would break. <laughs> so, uh. so, yeah, I was talking to him about it, and he said... He had no idea what the story was, but that's what he knew. He had no re idea why <laughs> you were going and fighting, or who you were, or what weapon you, why your weapon was a cross that turned into a whip. Okay. No, I... Uh, uh, yeah. But anyway. Uh, 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 transitions <laughs> of old video games icons to modern days. Um, I... Mario is probably the most successful one, I'd say. Well, and uh, plus it, it it's been staying successful regardless yeah. of 2D or 3D for the most part. Exactly, and it was one of the first games to transition really well from 2D to 3D, so I don't know. Um, what, what, uh, what's a bad example? Sonic. <laughs> um, I mean, come yeah. on, it's the easiest one. I mean, 2D, okay, I didn't like them, but I can sort of understand why other people did. Uh, but... You know, the 3D games are just horrible. Uh, I guess Adventures is sort of okay, and a lot of Sonic fans agree that it is sort of okay, but after that, it's just, ugh. That's, um... The Adventures is the one that's, like, kind of an RPG-ish kind of thing. I don't know, really. I've only played... I know there's an Orca that hunts you at some point. Um, well, it's not really... I don't guess it's an RPG in the terms of, like, leveling and stuff, but you, like, have a party that you choose between and... I All think stuff, so. Kind of. uh, wait, no, aren't you talking about Star Chronicles? I don't know. I played it on the Dreamcast. No, that's the Adventures game. Uh, okay. It was released later in, on the PC as well. But yeah, you, that's the game for uh, Dreamcast. I don't remember it really well, but I remember being very bored with it. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been bored with Sonic, so I shouldn't <laughs> speak up against it. But from what I've gathered... The new incarnations of Sonic are not doing well, although they've been doing better recently with Sonic 4 and Sonic Colors, and mm -hmm. I don't think Dark Chronicles was that badly panned either, and it was an RPG, but it was from Bioware, so I don't know. And hey, they got Sonic Freeriders now. Uh, I have absolutely uh, no idea. Uh, <laughs> we talked about I, that about the last time, man, remember? No. Remember, it's the, it's the, it's the one with the, that uses the Connect. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! Oh god! Oh yeah, the one with you, with holding hands. Oh my god! Yeah, right. That one. Uh, yeah, that's doing really, really well as well. Uh, mm -hmm. No, um, I I like the old Sonics, but I played like the new Sonics, and I think the mm -hmm. the reason I don't care for the new Sonics as much is because you grew up. Well, yeah, I guess because I grew up on two D, but like the three D games for the most part are like there are large sections of them that are technically 2d still yeah. but they make it look like it's 3d and i just felt kind of tricked into thinking i was playing a 3d game where most of the time i'm just stuck on a rail <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah i do but i think sonic would do i don't think sonic in full 3d <laughs> will be as easy to accomplish as people think i don't think 
it's going to be easy to handle the speed and everything without, you know, breaking a few molds here and there, but I don't know. Yeah, um, well, that's the issue, is he, he he's supposed to move real fast, and you just can't have yeah. people free roam 3D in that speed. It's just You know, gonna it's gonna... just going to be gameplay mess, uh, so I don't think that's a really good idea. But, plus you know, I... they're going to keep trying. Yeah, plus I don't think the hard worker keep up. No, especially not if you're running at the speed you're supposed to be running. <laughs> I mean, that's like light speed fast, and no. So I don't think the hardware at this point and day of, time of day will be able to keep up. But yeah. I don't know, some smart programmer might come along that in, invent a system or an engine that can, so who knows. Um, but what do we think about the transition of old video game icons to modern days? Uh... I mean, in general... Uh, should we keep it old school, or should they, like, advance? Well, I want to keep seeing more old school games, like you get uh, Mega Man in his old oh, in an yes. old school game, oh, and mm. they've, they've been releasing Mario games that are old school, uh, mm. kind of, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kirby's always been 2D, as far as I know, except for that racing game that came out. Now, I don't think he's ever ventured in 3D, but I think that's one of those points where it would get really boring really fast. Mm-hmm. Well, there has to be evolution. You have to add new content and stuff. Yeah, but exactly. I don't think you can. I I definitely don't want them to like say fuck it. Let's just stay with two D forever. Um, mm-hmm. There needs to be evolution. Uh, I'm not the kind of guy that can sit and play the same game over and over again without some kind of advancement somewhere. Um, yeah, and I think something bad that happened for trying to update all these uh, franchises was they like. Hop, they tried to hop them over the 3D when like they still treated 3D as a gimmick. Yeah. So they didn't really bother to make the game very good. No. The, the Sonic uh, game, the Sonic games had a problem with that. Uh, the Castlevania games had a problem with that. Most certainly, yes. <laughs> uh, um, Castlevania 64. Oof, dear lord. And uh, I, the transition from uh, of Star Fox from uh, just being a, a plain game to being a uh, a 3D adventure uh, game was super Yeah, but that was al- always 3D, so, you know. Well, but it, it, I'm, I'm thinking, like, in a transitional sense, because, yeah. like, Star Fox was, like, a rail a rail thing for the most part. Mm. And they are like, hey, let's make a 3D adventure game where he's just walking around. And Well, it pleased the, it pleased the furries, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. They, it, was, it made them really happy. But, no, th- that's the weird thing, is, like, I'm thinking of all the games that transitioned like that, and, like, the ones I did on the PlayStation, like for the most part, were pretty awful. Yeah. Uh, of the Dreamcast either, and uh, but I'm thinking like the Nintendo franchises that transitioned, and they all did it fairly well. Yeah, but uh, yeah, look, look at Mario 64, really successful, and I mean Zelda Ocarina of Time. People mm-hmm. still bicker to this day if it is the best Zelda game ever. Yeah, it or Majora's Mask. I'm not sure how that debate started, but. <laughs> I know, but I'm pretty sure Ocarina of Time has a way higher support than uh, yeah. Majora's Mask. Yeah, um, and uh, the Metroid games? Going yeah, they 2D. transitioned really well as well. Yeah, I really liked Prime, but apparently there's a lot of people who are like, Prime sucks so horribly. I, I don't really know. I, I played the games when they came out, and I had a lot of fun. Um, well, I just played them I recently, pl- actually. Okay. So. Uh, no, I played them when it came out. I liked Prime, the first game, a lot. I really did. Uh, but then I played the second game, and I wasn't as impressed, because I didn't think they did enough new, so to speak. Yeah, um, yeah, I, get, I know what you mean. Um, uh, it was still a good game, but it just... I was like, yeah, I played the, uh, Prime, and, you know, the story isn't that fucking interesting, so... So, yeah, we're... We're for... Uh, keep, keeping, ev- keeping evolving franchises. Yeah. Um, I have a really good example, by the way. Okay. Uh, Bionic Commando. Um, Bionic Commando for the NES is a great game. I love it. I did a Let's Play of it. Go check it out. Go check it out. Advertisement. Advertisement. Um, <laughs> it's on this blip. You know, uh, it's, it's on my YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Um, I'll show you so the ad revenue. Ch- <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's not on my YouTube channel. Just check it out on blip. Uh, I forgot <laughs> about that. Uh, but yeah, I did, I did a Let's Play of that game, and it's one of my favorite games ever. You know, that totally leak, leaked way of saying ever is ever, and it is my favorite game ever. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so they did Bionic Commando Rearmed, which was a remake of the first game. 
And it's one of the few game remakes that I can really get behind because they did enough to keep it old school, but at the same time they added a lot of new stuff. Uh, as a fan, I'll always love the old game best, naturally. Um, but yeah, it was a really good game. Uh, and then they did, and this is where it gets bad, because then they did Bionic Commando, again, but for the PS3 and 360 and PC, and it sucked. It went into complete 3D, you had free roaming abilities, but they just didn't know how to handle it, so it became a gimmick, you swung, you, sw you kept swinging around, but you never really did anything. And so that's a really, that's a good example first of how a game does well by, you know, moving forward with the times, new graphics, updated gameplay, and they're releasing Bionic Commando Realm 2 as well. And that has even more updates to the old formula, and that's sort of how I want to see the old games transition. Not into full 3D just because, because full 3D isn't automatically better. Yeah, yeah, maybe the, the, the problem is if they try to change too much at once... Yeah, like, I like, think that's a big problem. Like the VR, VR games, so I think are doing going to do well because they're, you know, adding the slight bits of things here and there as they mm -hmm. go. But then, like a lot of people try and completely change the franchise from one game to the next, and it yeah. doesn't seem to that, go very well. It rarely goes well. Uh, there are examples. I can't think of any right now, but I'm pretty sure there are examples where they radically change everything and suddenly a better game. Um, uh, Mario. That, yeah, that is actually that is because <laughs> uh, he was straight two D for a long time. Then they went three D, and it was yeah. still was cool. And they're like, "Hey, awesome. let's let's." Uh, and they also were like, "Hey, let's just make an RPG out of Mario." And that was also yeah, that awesome. worked really well. That's a great game. And if you haven't played Super <laughs> Mario RPG, go fucking play it seriously. Uh, oh, and Paper Mario as well. Yeah, uh, see? I love those games. And so that's a franchise that can actually take it. But that, I think that also comes from the fact that. Um, well, it's it's because it is the flagship franchise for the yeah, that too. The but I think Mario and, and Zelda has kept it its continuity and reality loose enough for different things to happen without people questioning why. Um, Castlevania is pretty strict with how things work, and the second you start to deviate from that, you kind of run into tr problem tr trouble um because you change things too much and then it's suddenly not castlevania and so forth but mario can always be changed because as long as it's mario nobody gives a shit it's mario game yeah the setting's not so important space. no exactly but yeah. in castlevania games if you're suddenly not in castlevania if there's not a dracula and you're playing as someone that isn't belmont you're gonna have to push it and you know really make it work and they have done that with castlevania so don't get me wrong uh, they've done really good stuff with Castlevania. I mean, Castlevania, uh, Symphony of the Night, come on. One of the best games ever. Yeah, which sadly I missed upon when it was released, and now it costs oh, way too much to pick it up. Uh, that's too bad. But it's been released for, like, PlayStation Network, 360. Yeah, I'm going to uh, have to get it on the PlayStation Network when I get my yeah, uh, PlayStation really 3. Uh, it's really great. It has an enormous amount of gameplay, so, you know... Go check it out if you haven't. I had I did not actually hear about that game until, jeez, I think like ten years after it was released. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, I was at some friend's house and they started playing, and I was like, "What the hell is this? This is the greatest game ever, man!" Like, oh, <laughs> you haven't played it? What the hell is wrong with you? Oh yeah, and on a side note, uh, I like Zelda too. I don't care anybody who hates it. No, I love it too. Zelda so, is awesome. Know, yeah, I like it. Uh, yeah. I like it when they try to do new, new and different things with stuff, so it's totally cool when they do that. And they did with Zelda, too. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, was there any other questions? We should go to the yeah, next questions. Yeah, well, I was thinking about it because I got a really, like, I got a little bit of flame for calling games artsy. And I just thought I'd clarify that when I say art, or artsy, when I say they're art, that's a good thing, but I, when I say they're artsy, that's not positive. Um, it's like fake art. Yeah, it, it's trying too hard to be art. Um, like, like Heavy Rain. Shh. I haven't played Heavy Rain, so I, <laughs> I will not. I've played the demo and I like that enough, but, you know, it's an interactive movie. Yeah, well, I like I actually like Indigo Prophecy, so... Uh, not me too, except for the damn twists at the end, but, you know, other than oh, that, it was a fun game. The plot got ridiculous at the end, I'll, I'll yeah, admit that, but I like the gameplay a lot. I would probably really love Heavy Rain, but a lot of people 
are hating it because it's not so much a game as like a movie. So uh, I like like we've stated, both of us like Indigo Prophecy, so I think we'll like Heavy Rain. Yeah. But I wouldn't pay sixty dollars for it, and I think that's where the big difference is. Um, well, I think it's like twenty now. <laughs> I, not here. I'm pretty sure oh. it isn't that cheap here yet. Uh, but I, I could pick it up used, I suppose. But I, I'm not really comfortable with buying games used. Uh, because yeah. money go into the wrong pockets at that time. So. But yeah, I, I agree with you, though. It's it's okay to, to try and make art out of your game, I guess. But you, yeah. you still have to have some interaction or gameplay going on. Yeah, it still yeah. has to be a good game. Uh, if it yeah. becomes a work of art... Because of that, that's that's totally okay. I'm okay with that. But, you know, art shouldn't be the focus. It shouldn't be like uh, we're making a game be because we want to make art. You want to make a game because you want to entertain the people that buy it. Um, or at least that's the way I see it. Now, other game makers can, of course, disagree. But if you're not entertaining your people or your players at the end of the day, you're not doing a good job as a game designer, no matter what kind of label you attach to your game. Uh, so, yeah, I'm getting a little bit... Uh, you know, you can hate me for saying it, but I don't think games are art. I think they can be art, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, they're interactive entertainment, first of all. So Yeah, I don't know about that that argument thing. Cause you, you, when you, if you look at it, like games are composed of things that are considered to be art. Like... Uh, Character model drawings, uh, story, yeah. all that stuff, but uh, I don't know. Uh, well, first of all, I should probably clarify again because this is YouTube and people will flame the hell out of me. Uh, but to <laughs> me, I mean, the image of art is, you know, boring paintings in an old dusty museum, and I don't like that. So whenever people say they should be more like art, I'm like, why? Why would you want to do that? Uh, you know, I, I thought games were supposed to be fun. So that's sort of the viewpoint I'm coming from when someone say, you know, they should be more like art. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. Uh, yeah, well, the only thing I would worry about on that is um, if you focus too much on making it artistically pleasing, you might suffer more on making it fun to play. Yeah, you know, that's definitely a problem. It's going to be a balance, but... yeah. Uh, I, that's up to game developers, but that, I just wanted to clarify that because, like I said, someone commented on it, and I thought I just like clarified so other people didn't sit there and go, "Oh my god, I hate that guy," because I really don't want you to hate me. I don't. Um, I just have opinions. I'm sorry. Well, you're allowed to. It's the. Are you it's sure America. about that? It's America. <laughs> I don't live in America. Uh. <laughs> okay, uh, you can't. So... You can't have opinions anymore. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, but uh, we were also talking about another question is, of course, um, we were talking about uh, The Witcher, which is a Western RPG. Oh, yeah. And people wanted us to th talk about what we think about Western RPGs, uh, or WRPGs, as people like to call them. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm going to do that. W yeah, if you if you read it out uh, the way people write it, it's WRPG uh, because people say JRPG, I guess. Yeah, it's the difference between Western, Western and Japanese. Yeah, I think Japanese RPGs are basically anything that's not American-made, not pretty much. <laughs> yeah, or, um, and not a lot of RPGs are made outside of America and Japan, uh, though yeah. they are coming. They, I mean, games like um, Gothic. Uh, yeah, that I was. Know um, on, I know they're. I think they're German or Polish. Yeah, I couldn't remember. I think they're German, actually. Don't quote me on that, but I think they're German. Uh, but yeah, so there are games outside, and I'm not sure. Are they called Western RPGs, or, they, or, or are they called Middle RPGs? I don't, I'm not sure. Um, it's pretty much. I think Western's pretty much the accepted yeah. uh, thing. But um, so what? Do we, the question was, what do we think of them? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm trying to find it here, but for some reason I can't find the uh, <laughs> the actual question anymore. Um, oh my goodness, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have to look it up now. Good, so I you think can you can talk. It. Yeah, um, Western RPGs. I'm not so happy about them. I don't really like Western RPGs, uh, mostly because I'm not into fantasy, and most Western RPGs um, 
get into fantasy way too much. And my my opinion of fantasy is Tolkien, you bastard, you ruined it for everyone. Uh, everybody's <laughs> so busy trying to copy you, Tolkien uh, that I can't really enjoy it because, you know, uh, I was talking with um, Ernest Adams uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about fantasy, and he said that when Tolkien was writing *Lords of the Ring* or *Lord of the Rings*, uh, he was like he took it like his uh, manuscript to a bar or a pub, and you know he, they read it to each other. Like a couple of professors read their works to each other and so forth. Yeah. And then one day when Tolkien came back, he had more of his *Lord of the Rings*, and somebody exclaimed, "Oh God, no! Another bloody elf!" Um, and that's basically how I feel about RPGs or fantasy RPGs in general. Because I hate elves, I hate dwarfs, I hate orcs, I hate everything right now. Um, you know, I, I'm just so surprised that people call it fantasy. But, I mean, where's the fantasy? I mean, there's no fantasy involved anymore. Uh, they just copy-paste mm -hmm. it. And that just pisses me off. Yeah, alright, the, the question was... Uh, ex the the formula of generic Western RPGs and like what common elements they have and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll go in this different direction instead because I want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I kind of agree. There's not like in especially especially if you're going to call your the genre that you're writing for fantasy. There's not enough fantastical thinking. No, if there's I can use that no, term. Yes. Uh, that's a pretty good uh, description, actually. We like that. So people aren't really coming up with n new things or new ideas or trying to trying anything like that. They're kind of just using everything based on Tolkien, pretty yeah. much. Um, you know, that's. I don't think Tolkien wanted that. <laughs> if we want to be like that, I don't really think he wanted us to like totally. Um, like lose ourselves in his work. I mean, he probably liked his art, but I don't think he wanted to set a standard for it. Um, because standards kill uh, creativity. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you there. I think uh, it, it would be hard to believe that the one of the most dedicated fantasy writers ever would want people to stagnate like that. Yeah, you know? uh, uh, that's it's a big shame, and but, I don't think he'd be especially proud for that matter either. <laughs> Considering but, uh, a lot of the fantasy today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Um, <clears throat> but uh, some of the... Uh, for Western RPGs, I actually enjoy them for the most part. Yeah, you're enjoying The Witcher, so... Yeah. Uh, Although I'll, that might be... A, you know, a lot of people enjoy The Witcher, so... Yeah, uh, and it's not... It's a, one of those, I guess... I guess in any more, it's a dime a dozen grim, dark fantasy. Mm. Um, but um, I don't mind that setting that much. A lot of people like hate on anything that's that's supposed to be like overly dark and moody and stuff. But yeah, I don't mind that at all. So it works for me. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at the same time, there are Western RPGs that I love. Uh, I mean. Even if people were like, when you first think of Western RPGs, you don't really think Mass Effect, but it is a Western RPG. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's just that it's set in space. Uh, well, and, you know, I'm, you know, so I can't really say that I hate all Western RPGs because Mass Effect 2 is as, perf to per is as close to perfection that a game has ever come in my eyes. So, you know, huh. um, I really, 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 really love Mass Effect 2. I think. I, you know, I bought it, and I've been playing it since I bought it, so, you know, I played the first game, thought that was pretty good, and then they came with Mass Effect 2, changed a lot of things, and I was like, holy shit, this is a lot better. How did this happen? Where, where, what did they do right? Uh, yeah, so I can't really say I hate all Western RPGs. <laughs> well, uh, is, is that on the PlayStation 3? No, not yet. No. It's coming. Oh. They're, they're making a... Uh, they're porting it to the PS3. Uh, I've actually two anyway. Yeah, I've actually been like avoiding that franchise altogether. Cause that's that's a really big shame. But you know, if you don't like sci-fi, it's push. <laughs> I like sci-fi and stuff. It's just I don't then know. Then why are you avoiding it? I don't know. I just kind of <laughs> like looked at it and I was like, oh, okay, and then I just moved on. I don't know. 
I'm not okay. pick, I'm not, I have no particular reason why. Uh, That's because, a shame because it's a really good game. Uh, the story <laughs> is, I mean, story writing in it is absolutely amazing. The way that you can actually make decisions in the first game, and people say that there weren't enough decisions in Mass Effect One that you know affected the second game. But at the same time, the fact that decisions carry over in game is so rare these days that you know any sort of progress in that area is amazing. Uh, well, maybe I'll just have to get the second one. I yeah, guess. you should, because they're releasing it uh, next year, I think, early 2011, I think it was, but don't quote me on that. Mm. Uh, they're releasing the first, they're not releasing the first game for a PS3. It's on the PC, though, so. Yeah, but you can, you when you buy Mass Effect 2 for the PS3, you get an interactive comic, sort of, uh, so you can sort of go through the motions of the first game and make the decisions that count in the second game. Oh, okay, uh, I see. So you That's still get to make the decisions, uh, so you don't just play like a generic shepherd. Um, That's pretty neat, okay. Yeah, you won't get the attachment to the characters that I have. I mean, hell, holy hell, why wasn't Rex in the second game? I mean, oh, I love that guy. Uh, I would have his babies if I could, uh, but I can't. Aww. But yeah, I know, I'm really sad about that. You know, Rex was my beacon of light. But okay. before this gets too creepy, <laughs> but you know it's still a real cool thing they're doing, so. and they were talking about releasing the first game, remaking it, but they're not gonna do that because they want to keep it like Microsoft exclusive. <laughs> yeah, I know. But so you, oh well. Yeah, but it's the, not that cheap on Steam. Uh, it's not that expensive on Steam, so you can get it. Yeah. But uh, Western RPGs, like what? Oh yeah, we what makes it different that. than a Japanese one? Do you think? I think, well, first of all, it's the art style. Um, mm -hmm. Japanese RPGs, they really often go for more colorful, uh, really upbeat art. Effeminate. Uh, yeah, very effeminate. Um, <laughs> uh, but there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Uh, oh, there's totally something wrong with that. <laughs> oh, you're going to piss off so many people saying that. Um, but yeah, I'm... and they, they go for a different art style. And... I mean, they, there's not a lot of role playing really um, taking place in JRPGs. Not the way I see it, anyway. You don't make that many decisions. Uh, you don't really affect the story in most games. All you do is steer him along a path, and the RPG aspect of it is that you level up and you know gain new abilities, and that's enough to be called an RPG. Which I am very much against because I play RPGs, tabletop RPGs. So you know, hey, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the. Uh, biggest uh, difference is that the art style and the way that the story progresses most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, Western it, RPGs have a lot of faffing about. Well, it used to be also that um, Western RPGs focused more on uh, combat stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I think like like any more like if it's a Western RPG, it your combat's going to be like a first-person shooter kind of thing, <laughs> almost almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. um, the Witcher is actually uh, more of a third-person Diablo-esque combat. Yeah, but we have a lot of those too. I mean, Baldur's Gate and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Baldur's Gate and the first two Fallout's uh, were more of a. Uh, they were isometric. Uh, yeah, turn turn-based D and D. Sort of, kind of, maybe. Uh, that's depending on how you see it, but yeah. Well, it wasn't one to one a D and D. But uh, they did the best they could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which was pretty good for Fallout. I can't say the same for Baldur's Gate, but whatever. Well, yes, I don't like Baldur's Gate. I'm a horrible person. You are a horrible person. Uh, yeah, but now I don't like Baldur's Gate, so I'm even more horrible. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, but, um, yeah, I think I think you're right though. That's that's pretty much a difference. Is is just the art style and mm -hmm. kind of the way you experience the story. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with either. Oh no, I play both. So um, yeah, me too. Most uh, well, okay. I'm not the biggest fan of JRPGs, but then again, I'm not the biggest fan of Western RPGs either. So I don't know. Well, there you go. <laughs> so well, I'm I'm uh, I'm a fairly hateful across the board. Well, I haven't. Um, I actually haven't played any Japanese RPGs for quite a while. <gasps> uh, well, it, I think it's almost been since shit. I think since. I got Final Fantasy X and Star Ocean 3. Oh, Star Ocean until the end of time? Yeah, 3. 
Yeah. Well, it's not called three, so I don't know how many people know that. Yeah, I think one. it. I think it's in generally called Star Ocean Three. Okay, but uh, because Star Ocean Four oh, was released not that long ago. Are we going? What do you think Kingdom Hearts would be? I'd rather not think speak of Kingdom Hearts, but that's, I think it's a JRPG, actually. I think it's an action RPG. Uh, I was really, thinking. I was just thinking in terms of art style and the. Yeah, I the, think it's stuff. closer to JRPG than it is to Western RPG. Yeah. Uh, if Even you look it, at it, you don't have the. Uh, you don't really make choices. You just follow the story on a linear fashion. Uh, the art style got, is way more Japanese than it is Western. Everyone's got ridiculously spiked hair. Yeah, exactly. Uh, among other things, and then again, <laughs> it, is, it was made by SquareSoft, which is a Japanese yeah. company. Yeah. Uh, so it's not that I would say if we had to make a decision there, I'd say JRPG because it lacks choice making. It lacks the really dull art style of Western RPGs. Um, it's not dirt brown or gunmetal gray or whatever. Um, <laughs> and you know, so I, I'd say JRPGs. And I'm not saying I dislike dirt brown or, or gunmetal gray. I think they have their place uh, yeah. in art style. But uh, uh, okay, they so should be used everywhere. So those were like the last three I played, and I hated every single one of them. <laughs> so I've been avoiding JRPGs. They, they're, I think to me anymore, they're too much like I'm basically watching a semi-interactive anime. Mm. And I like animes, but I don't want to play one. Really? That makes no. sense. That's, that's odd. Well, I just... It's just ridiculous. Do you know what I'm talking? Like, <laughs> I like anime and stuff, but there yeah, are so many times where him. there's so many times where we're like, no, I will spare his life. Like, why? Why are you going to spare <laughs> his life? He's the ultimate evil of the universe. And you're like, no, I'm sure he's turned over a new leaf. No, he hasn't. He's going to no, stab you in the, the back. Bastard. He's going to stab you in the back in next season. You f- stupid moron. <laughs> and when I'm playing yeah. a game, when I'm playing a game where I've like slaughtered his entire army, and then I finally get to him. I'm like, no, we should spare his life. It's like, no, we should kill him. I want to kill him. Where's my <laughs> Where's my kill option? And I'm, then I have to remember I'm not playing a Western RPG and I don't get any yeah. choices. So, uh, uh, if you like <laughs> choices, play Mass Effect. Just saying. All right, uh, all right. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, but uh, that's I guess I guess that's a broad idea of what we think about Western RPGs. I suppose. Yeah, we might get into it more later, I guess. Yeah, probably. We have a few more episodes of these to go before we're famous. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we can still screw around for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody's listening anyway. Uh, um, yeah, so, okay, anyway, we're uh, getting closer to the end here, so I thought we'd talk about Christmas a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this is our Christmas episode, sort of, maybe, kind of. So it's only fair that we talk about Christmas, I suppose. It'll, it'll be about Christmas... By the time this is uploaded, so. <laughs> oh, are you calling yourself lazy? Well, no, it's just I've, I've somehow gotten into <clears throat> uploading on Wednesday. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's so, close to Christmas. Yeah, it's like two uh, days. For those of you who do not know, we in Sweden celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve, and we get our presents done too. You uh, bastards. Yeah, I know we're totally breaking tradition, but we've been doing it forever, so. Uh, we don't like to torment our children by having the party on Christmas Eve and then like asking them to sleep before they can open the presents. So we're like, you know, we know they just want the presents, so we're like, yeah, let's eat and then watch something cartoony and have fun, and then you can open your goddamn present and leave us alone. Well, I think the the I think the thing of making them wait till Christmas was because of uh, trying to trick do the Santa trick, you know? Yeah, I could, I suppose. Uh, we sort of we have a man in a mask coming in and delivering the presents, and you know kids believe it up until they're like five, um, and then the adults think it's so fun that they keep doing it even after the children have stopped believing, um, because it's more of a thing for adults I think than it is for the kids. Yeah, this is a point where it gets sad. Like, yeah. it's like Dad, come on now. <laughs> yeah, we know we're we know Santa Claus doesn't exist. We're twenty five. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but we sort of skipped the Santa Claus the last couple of years because, you know, when your kids are over 20, you don't really bring out Santa Claus anymore. Um, Not at that point, you just have to kind of question 
the, your dad's motivations. Yeah, it's sort of scary at that point. Like, I think um, you just like dressing up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just like it. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, Christmas, let's not stray too far off topic here. Um, <laughs> because we have a tendency to do so, and people keep commenting that we stray off topic, so I don't know. Um, well, maybe we do, I'm not sure. We're just free-flowing. Yeah, this is a podcast that is not scripted, so we have absolutely no idea what we're going to talk about before we talk about it, and we hardly have an idea about it then, so I don't know. <laughs> we're just talking out our ass the whole time. That's, yeah, exactly. That's it. Um, but yeah, so anyway, Christmas, we've, you know, we're gamers, we've uh, asked for Christmas, uh, games and Christmas presents, I bet, uh, and I've got a few. Have you got any games for Christmas? Uh, yeah, I've, my first games were... From Christmas, actually. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Cool. When I was uh, five, I think. Oh. Four or five, I think. I actually remember it. I got a Nintendo Entertainment System Ooh. for Christmas with uh, Super Mario 2, which had just come out. <laughs> and I still love that game. People hate yeah, on I'm it. With you. No, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I love Super Mario but, 2. I, uh... but, yeah, that, that was the first Christmas I remember, actually. Oh, cool. Their got, first Christmas was Nintendo Christmas. Oh, yeah, I got... What was it? I got Mario 2 and the the Mario Duck Hunt combo pack. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That was that was awesome. I, I really envy you. All I got was an Amiga. I mean, come on. Hello. <laughs> That's sad. No, I, my, I think <laughs> one of my happiest memories is of the Christmas we got the Amiga system, or the Amiga computer. Um... I remember it because at that age we didn't have a computer at that point, uh, uh, and Amigas were pretty new. They were they cost a bit. They they cost a fair bit at the time. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've read about that. I didn't I didn't have an Amiga or anything, so I didn't know. Yeah. But like how much it cost and the games cost. Wow. Yeah, it was it, most. That's uh, you sort of went with the Amiga and Commodore. That's when uh, pirating games really became popular. <laughs> Uh, and for a bloody good reason. For once, they, nobody bought games. Uh, they were way too expensive at the time. And, you know, gaming was fairly new at that time, at least here. So, you know, there were no, there were really no stores that focused on games. Uh, the stores that had them basically had them hidden away in a corner. Uh, so, and you had absolutely no idea of knowing what games were good. Because, you know, we didn't have the internet back then. Um, I feel so old talking about this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we didn't have internet. We all all we had to go was on were, were the few Amiga uh, like magazines that came out, uh, and we had the box art. Uh, yeah, so and that was very often misleading. <laughs> <laughs> no, you say? <laughs> uh, yeah, but, um, so you know, people didn't really buy Amiga games, and I have to say that my family wasn't exactly saints in that department. Uh, we had a few original games for the Amiga, but <laughs> yeah, let's just say that like 90% of our library was copied, uh, pirated games. Um, which was the second reason why people pirated games, because it was so bloody easy for the Amiga. It was ridiculous. Um, uh, it was a lot easier than it was today. You know, you just pushed a diskette in and you basically copied it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it worked most of the time. A lot of things had copyright, but uh, if you had like broken it once, it was broken forever. So I don't know. It was well, really easy to copy games at that time. Well, that's why they started putting those uh, those pictures in the middle of games just at random and being like, "Look yeah. at page five of your manual to see what this means." <laughs> oh, I remember getting Dune and for the Amiga, and you had to la have like a three hundred page textbooks. Just so you could play the fucking game, because it was like, yeah, check out page 126, row 19, uh, word 5, what does it say? And you were like, holy shit! Uh, and then <laughs> you, you stopped like, in the game to read a book. <laughs> yeah, and then you were like, had to like get your friend to copy the um, textbook for you, and it was like a lot of pages, so it cost him a fair bit just to get the damn manual. So you you had been better you would have been better off just buying the game, uh, so I guess it worked. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then they lost all that money printing manuals. <laughs> <laughs> true, 
crew. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, but th those were the days. Those really were the days. Uh, oh, I still yeah. love my Amiga, and so it's one of the best gifts. It wasn't for me. I mean, it was for the family. But, mm -hmm. you know, nobody in the family is playing the Amiga anymore. So I, like, when I moved out from home, I was like, Dad, are you going to use that computer? Are you going to use the Amiga? No, can I bring it along? And he was like, sure. He frees up space in the attic. <laughs> so, yeah, I have an Amiga standing in my closet, but I do not have the cables for it, which I am going home for Christmas and grabbing. Uh, yeah, so you, can start, going home. you start LPing some Amiga games. All right. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to pull that off, but just, sure. Just point a camera at the screen, it'll be fine. Oh, good grief, no. <laughs> I have some dignity, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but those, that was probably the best game-related gift I had got for Christmas, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But let's not pre pretend here and say the Amiga is a computer, because it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a console, very advanced console. Yeah, it's a console that just used uh, the computer's data media, data yeah. media to have exactly. its games on. I mean, uh, there were a few softwares for it, like writing and printing, but you know, nobody used those. You had to be really primitive and backwards to use that. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, um, I think like most of my consoles I've gotten have been Christmas, have been Christmas uh, related. Uh, gifts, even my Wii technically, because it came out around Christmas. <laughs> Was it a, a gift to yourself? Oh yeah, <laughs> and the kids, but they don't get to play it as much. No, I don't let them touch it. <laughs> Go play with your PS3, but kids, I'm gonna play with the Wii. That's right. <laughs> my little kid, my, my my young children are playing with the PS3, and I got the Wii. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I can picture it right oh. now. That's great. Uh, it's like, hey dad, yeah. you want to play Call of Duty Black Ops? No, so I'm playing Kirby's Epic Yarn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is awesome. Uh, yeah. But, no, that, uh, the, game, the, game is, the game is actually good. So I'm not, I, I'm not making fun of Kirby's Epic Wii. Yarn. I'm just but saying that's a humorous play, image. You can my... make fun of Wii as much as you want. So it's, that's, 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 a, that's a humorous cool. image in my head. That's, I'm just going to say that. Uh, but, um, yeah, other Christmas-related gifts I got. Uh, most of my consoles are either bought by myself or given up at, to me at my birthday, actually. Um, so I don't really got consoles on Christmas. I'm very sad. I'm very depressed about that. But uh, I bought a, a... I'm, like, making up for lost time by buying all the games I didn't get to play then. Now... So I'm just a big kid, really. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, but other, I think one of the strongest memories I have of Christmas related games was when I got, I usually asked for money and in uh, gift or uh, Christmas presents because, uh, you know, when you have most of your, you, they don't know what to buy for you. So you were like, oh, what do you want? And I'm like, shit. I'm just going to ask for money so I can buy whatever I want. I'm really greedy. Uh, yeah. I had an issue with that, uh, too. Because, especially like you were talking back, back way back like in the Amiga days, yeah. uh, the gaming stuff was not... You know, there, w there wasn't electronic stores where you went and no. picked up your game in, or websites or anything. Like, my, all my, a lot of my stuff was ordered out of, like, JCPenney Magazine. <laughs> That's how far back I'm going. Yeah, here. we're going but, way back. <laughs> so, yeah, telling telling your relatives like, oh, I want to get this game or something. What what would happen more often than not is they would try and find it and inevitably not find it because it you know you have to know where to look, and then they end up buying you something you don't want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I was a little bit greedy on that in that aspect. So I was like, yeah, give me some money and I'll just buy whatever I want, and you can pretend you bought it for me. Yeah, um, but uh, I got money, and the first game I I ordered my first game right around Christmas. Then after I got the money, and that was such a big thrill, just like buying a game uh, for myself for the first time. Um, it was Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, Redemption. Uh, yeah. All right, because I think it's called not Bloodlines uh, Redemption. It's the one where you play as a crusader. Yeah, Christoph. 
Yeah. I still remember. Um, <laughs> and that was my first game that I bought. Um, and I was so disappointed because it wouldn't run on my computer. Oh, was it uh, not good enough? It was good enough, but I think the game was so poorly made that it had a ton of memory leaks. So after you played it for a while, it just froze up. You couldn't play it anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And the only way to get around that was because even if you quit the game and started it again, it froze really soon after. Uh, so I think it was terribly bugged somehow. Uh, because you could play like for 10 hours at first, and I usually did that, and I played it for 10 hours and then froze, and then you started over, and then you ended up like freezing just five minutes in. So it became sort of, you had to uninstall it, and install it, and then you can continue playing. Wow. Yeah, that was terrible for me. And at that time, I only had a gig, 8 gigabyte hard drive, uh, which I was sharing with the whole family, by the way, so it wasn't just my computer. Uh, but we had an 8 gigabyte hard drive, and Vampire the Masquerade Redemption took up 1 gigabyte. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, so my family was not happy about that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was my first game that I bought myself, basically, and I'm so happy about that. Uh, I I still remember it very fondly, fondling, uh, fondly. <laughs> Please don't. No, I'm, no. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm all we're recording, man. <laughs> uh, no, but um, so yeah, that, I was like flipping through the, and at that time we didn't really have internet as he either. Uh, so I, was, I had like a magazine and I was just looking through the list of games they had and I found like Vampire and it said like, oh, you could do all of this amazing stuff that you couldn't do before in RPGs. Um, so I bought it off of that, just that. I, I, like, I called her up and called them up and said, yeah, I want this game. I have absolutely no idea what it is and I don't know what you do and I have absolutely no way how it looks, but I want this game. And I got it. So, uh, that's Christmas right. related. And also, to, to go back to the earlier conversation, that's a another Western RPG example. There you go. Yay! <laughs> yeah, see, we, we remember the things we said before, sort of. Kind of. We connect back. No, I'm going to listen back to this and be like, yeah. wow, I said that? <laughs> uh, but yeah. I, uh, yeah, I actually Western can't RPG. remember the first game I had to buy with my own money. Oof. That's unfortunate. Well, I had a system worked out where I didn't get any, um, I didn't get like an allowance or anything. Yeah. But like every couple months if I said, hey, I want that, they'd be like, all right, fine. Ah, uh, okay. So, so accumulated money in their pockets. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how it worked. Yeah. Uh, that's sort of cool because I think that's, actually a better way to like because then they don't have to save it themselves so they don't have to go through the anguish of having money but not being allowed to spend it uh, because that's really terrible for a kid uh, yeah I... <laughs> okay maybe not but still <laughs> well no you... yeah kids are too impulsive to be like look you should keep saving your money because eventually eventually you can buy something really nice <laughs> But I want candy. Oh my god, all the chewing gum I ate or chewed. <laughs> I was gonna ask if you actually eat it or <laughs> Yeah, we do that in Sweden, don't you? Some uh, people do. Yeah. I, uh, I think it's I think it, it would be unhealthy, so I try <laughs> in not the long to. run I don't think you should do that, no. Um, I don't think you have to worry if you accidentally swallow one gum, but you know, yeah. don't keep doing it. But Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, most of, but in the end, yeah, most of my games came from Christmas purchases, mm. for the most part, like, uh, almost all of them, uh, so, like, uh, Montana 64 was a Christmas present with, uh, Mario and, I never and, got um, a Nintendo 64. Hmm? I never got a Nintendo 64. Uh, I like it, but to be quite honest, you weren't, you're not missing much. I, I have played it since then, don't worry. <laughs> you, I mean, at the point in time, you didn't really miss No, a lot. That's, that's it's fine. Except Mario 64. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you were talking about Nintendo 64. Oh, yeah, that... I think. 
that was the the present like every like I got for Christmas and a lot of my friends got for Christmas too and that was like the one where like you came back to school after break and you're like hell yeah man I got a Nintendo 64 all right like that was something to brag about like that was a hot thing to get to get that year so yeah that's I I got a I don't think I've ever bought a console on release actually uh, that's I just shameful was, uh, well, I think I bought my GameCube on release, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm terrible at that. I, I don't really get into the hype for new consoles. I usually stick around uh, for it a little while. Um, I think I got the Wii close to release as well. I got a really good offer on a Wii um, because they were like, yeah, trade in your old console and five games and you get the Wii really cheap. And I was like, yeah, I have an Xbox and I have an Xbox 360. Why should I save my Xbox? You know, I was like, it's just, nobody's going to want to buy it, so I might as well just trade it in and get the Wii, even if I don't want the Wii. But, uh, <laughs> that was probably a good uh, plan, actually. Yeah, probably. Uh, no, but, yeah, <laughs> I guess I can talk more recently, but instead of childhood memories, because uh, I, I, I really forget exactly which games I got for Christmas and which I didn't. Mm. Most of them were, but... Like, the Wii was recently, so I can actually remember that. <laughs> no, I, uh... You're that but, old, huh? Yeah. Memory's already failing. It's it's leaving me. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, uh... The, the, the Wii was the first time I actually had to, to sit around and wait for a store to open to go get it. <laughs> because, you know, like, most of the time, like, I don't care, like... You, there are people who go to like midnight openings for game releases yeah. and stuff, and they pre-order their games and all this other junk. And it's like, I don't see a point in pre-ordering the next new game because it's not like they're going to run out. No, I do it sometimes, like for Mass Effect. But well, if they're uh, giving you something to pre-order, yeah, I, I usually I pre-order uh, collector's editions usually. Um, yeah, uh, but I usually do it for games I really like, just because I really want them really fast. So. <laughs> uh, well, That's usually my excuse, anyway. But, yeah, the, the Wii was the first thing I actually sat and waited for a store to open to get it because uh, I knew it was going to sell out. Mm. Like, I heard the production numbers, <laughs> and I heard how many every store was going to be getting anytime soon. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to... There's there, Every store around me is getting, like, 12-ish. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, if I want it anytime soon, I'm going to have to be waiting in line. So yeah. it was me and a bunch of people in line. And sadly, uh, there was a bunch of people who were at like at the end of the line, like an yeah. hour before the store opened. Oh. Like a bunch of people, a bunch of people show up an hour before the store opened and like started going to the end. And we were all like, uh, guys, you might as well just leave because <laughs> they don't have enough for you. <laughs> and they 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 wouldn't believe us. They thought that I guess they thought that we were trying to to scam them out of getting yeah. them the Wii or something. Like we couldn't just do that anyways by buying more than one. <laughs> but <clears throat> but uh, no, that that was like the first time I had to do it, and uh, it was actually really uh, even though it was like ten degrees outside, <laughs> it was really fun. It was a it fun was experience. Really worth it. Well. Yeah, I mean, because I love the console in the first place, but also because uh, uh, everyone was talking and just hanging out and stuff yeah. the whole time. And there was a guy I was I was talking to the whole time, and there was one point where we we're all like, "It's really cold out here," and none of us really prepared ourselves for how cold it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so a few of us got stepped out of line and went to like a Walmart that was right down the road. Yeah. To go get blankets for everybody. Aww. And, uh, yeah, and the, the sad thing was, like, at the time, uh, I was picking up stuff, and, uh, I didn't have enough money for one thing I was wanting, like, there was, I, I got some things, but then I didn't have enough extra money to get, like, this blanket that I was wanting to stay warm, so this one guy got it for me. Aww. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, that's cool, man, I'll, I'll, I'll try and pay you back for something, and then... He was like, "All right, sure, whatever." And then we got in the store, and he was like, "Just forget it. I don't care." He so just wanted his Wii. I, 
I got gift. I got gifted a blanket from somebody oh. in line. Do you, do you still have that blanket? I do, but I don't like the way you're asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. It yeah, was, but it you, was a you, special you, gift. <laughs> I thought, thought you were going to be going one. somewhere here, and I was like, uh, no, no, no. Yes, no I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to do that today. It's Christmas, so I'm going to be nice. Uh, but otherwise, I would have. I know. I know. <laughs> That's why I was worried. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much time we have left, so. A uh, couple seconds. Okay. Until now. Um, <laughs> Actually, I think we're past an hour already. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. You have a lot of. Uh, you can, like. Post more on YouTube now than you could before, so it doesn't matter. I got my. I haven't tested it actually, but as far as I know, it's a half hour. Oh, cool. Uh, then we can talk for like a more, a lot more. So <laughs> never mind. I, I'll no, know that's what that means. Um, yeah, it's a good place I to think. end it. Yeah, I think so. Um, anyway, I suppose I should say that I'm going home for Christmas. So I don't. We. I'm not exactly sure when we're doing the next one. Um, but as a little hint to everybody, we're doing something special very soon. I mm -hmm. think. Uh, but we're not going to reveal anything more on that. Uh, just say, I, I'm just going to say, keep your eyes and ears peeled for what we do next because we're doing something cool. Uh, let's just leave it at that. That's I all you need to tell know. everyone. Leave them one yeah. more. Leave them one more. Exactly. Uh, but anyway, I think uh, this is our us saying uh, goodbye for this time, possibly for this year. We're I'm not exactly sure, uh, uh, but uh, probably so actually. Probably, I think so too. Um, yeah. But you you never know. We might get the feel for we got the touch. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is um, this is it for 2010, I suppose. And I wish everybody out there who's listening a very Merry Christmas or whatever you want to celebrate. Just celebrate something. Go be with your family. Uh, yes. Have fun. Eat eat great food and everything. It doesn't matter what you celebrate. It doesn't matter what religion. Just go have fun. Yes. Exchange uh, presents. Be nice to each other. Yeah, exactly. Presents are very go. important. All right. <laughs> anyway, I suppose yeah, Merry well, Christmas and a Happy New Year to you guys. And... Yep. I hope you've enjoyed this. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye. Bye. Uh...